The big storm we've been waiting for is finally here. I just went sideways down my driveway trying to back up. So there's bound to be a problem. It's our only snow blower for the driveway is out of commission. Our brand new skid steer is broken and Trent is gonna try to fix it. I have no idea why the fan belt failed, how it got shredded, how it got tangled up in there. Come along today as we brace for impact. I smashed my finger. And tackle the first major storm of the year. We're supposed to get 30 more inches of snow by the end of the weekend. What's up guys and good morning. Today we are getting started really early. You can see there is still frost on the windows and I'm getting ready to feed the dogs. And you guys have seen us go through a lot of different dog foods. Now, Sundays for Dogs is the food that we are on right now and we absolutely love it. This is actually real food that's air dried and it's created by vets. And today's video is sponsored by Sundays for Dogs. Our dogs are part of our family and they deserve to eat just as well as we do. You can tell just by looking at Sundays for Dogs that this is not your normal type of dog food. It's almost like a beef jerky or something like that. And honestly, every single ingredient on the side of this box are things you can pronounce and they're probably things you eat. They're all like whole food ingredients, which is absolutely amazing. It's all very nutrient dense, so you don't have to feed your dogs five cups of kibble or something crazy. It's pretty small portions that are very nutrient dense and it's really good for your dog. If you guys are interested in trying Sundays for Dogs, we highly recommend it. It is absolutely amazing. And right now they're doing a special deal where if you guys click the link in our description or go to sundaysfordogs.com slash Trent and Allie or just use Trent and Allie at checkout and you will get 50% off your first box. So go ahead and go over and check out Sundays for Dogs. I wanted to say thank you to Sundays for Dogs for sponsoring today's video. Now I'm gonna get ready and we're gonna head out and get to work. It is a nice, beautiful, kind of warm day. It's above freezing. Um, there is a very large storm coming this weekend and it should be the biggest one we've had all year. I think they're forecasting like 14 inches. So we're very excited for that because now that we're actually prepared for snow, we're like embracing it and then it's not actually really coming. So we're excited for a big snowstorm. Uh, Brandon just showed up. He brought up some scaffolding today. So we are gonna start by uh, going up into the bedroom and trying to get our interior walls kind of laid out on all the floor pieces. Uh, Allie went to go pick up Grayson and drop off Leo because Leo is going on a field trip with Aunt Jennifer. And so she's gonna bring Grayson back up. When he gets here, we're gonna get started getting all that scaffolding up there. We're gonna build all those interior walls that we stopped on in the last video. And hopefully by the end of the day, we'll have some really good progress in the bedroom. We're gonna try and set the candle up in the living room. There is snow on top of the metal roof, so it's not sloughing because that room isn't heated, so the snow and the ice is basically just adhered to the roof. As the snow builds up, it will get to a certain point where the weight will just shift the ice and snow off of that roof, no problem. But we're gonna try and persuade it by putting the candle in the living room, turning it on full blast, letting all the heat heat that ceiling and heat that uh, metal roof, and then hopefully all the snow will just slide right off nice and smooth and then we'll know that we're gonna be good for the winter. Oh, hey. Hey, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Two by four, 37 inches. I know it seems like we're all probably smoking in here, but it's just how cold it is that you can see all of our breath. That's not stopping us because uh, we're inside, which is kind of nice. There's no wind. It's a little chilly, but it could always be worse. Cold's not stopping us yet, but it might because it is absolutely freezing. <laughs> I was like, you know, we'll get the candle going. It's gonna heat up in there, melt that roof. The heat will start to trickle its way up here and get trapped into this big hot air balloon of a room that's yeah. just gonna get nice and steamy, but not yet. <laughs> It's still early. Not yet. Today's supposed to be one of the warmer days. I was like, oh, it's gonna be fine. It's freezing. <laughs> bash my elbow. Oh no! Ow! Yeah. Oh. So far, 
frustrating that it's called a funny bone because there's it's literally not it's not funny at all when you hit it. <laughs> oh man. Dean said that if we turn the, the sunroom on air conditioning, that the mini split would pump heat out here. <laughs> oh, really? His furnace skills would be very useful right now. It's almost the dead of winter, which is normally when it's his turn to come up here. Oh, there needs to be a bit more snow before Dean's coming So I don't know how well it comes across on the camera. You can see the little dripple to water right there, and you can see like a little bit of slush underneath the snow, which means the candle is doing its job. And once that slush gets a little bit slippery and the very center of this giant patch of snow gets a little bit wet and slippery, whoop, the whole thing's just gonna come sliding right off. Is that the noise it'll make? It will probably make a shh. <laughs> I know, I could do sound effects. It's <laughs> pretty cool. I don't know if it's tall enough. Might hit your head walking in. Yeah, right. Not Greg Ostertag. <laughs> I don't know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> he played for the jazz when we were in like fourth grade. <laughs> <laughs> Double zero is his number? Yeah, I think so. It really does look like it be it could be the perfect closet size for you. Yeah, it could do that. Just I could just put my clothes in here where you poop. <laughs> They just always smell great. <laughs> All right, so this is gonna be our little toilet closet. I don't know what else to call it, toilet stall. Um, toilet, obviously, goes right here. And it's gonna sit this way. Now, this wrap opening is really large, but that's because with a pocket door, you have to make the opening twice the size of the pocket door because you frame in like a whole mechanism and an assembly and hardware, and then you hang your door slab, and the door slab which in this room is only two feet wide, will slide over inside the drywall and then latch. You'll walk in and out right here, hopefully just narrowly missing our freestanding bathtub. <laughs> and then wash your hands for sure. <laughs> which pocket door are we moving on to next? Live your life within the moment, moment And don't go wait until the morning, morning You never know when it is over, over All that I know is we'll get older, older So let us dance this side away Safety squints on. <laughs> Those don't count. <laughs> so that one was done, and now you're putting up some backer in the ceiling basically. She's putting up some blocking in between these joists because the top plate of these walls that run perpendicular to the rafters are landing like right in the middle of the rafters. So we gotta put blocking in for the top plates to attach to, and then we can do these studs. Cool. That scaffolding. Oh, it's freezing. <laughs> Should be I, warmer up there. I thought it would be toasty up here, but I'm dying. You need to go eat some beans. You can have some self warm. Yeah, plenty of self warm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> All right, well, things are really uh, taking shape up here. We'll say that. Uh, you probably can't see or really tell what's going on from up here on top of this scaffolding, but this right here, this wall is gonna be the top of the stairway, and there's gonna be a door right here that blocks off our bedroom, obviously. And this wall is almost done. We have to put our two jack studs in at the header, uh, two cripples, two top cripples, and then we have six long studs on this wall here and then all the walls will be done except for three walls over there so basically nothing is done and we're going to be out of two by fours so i went through and calculated i was like this i counted as like, we need this many two by fours it's going to be this much i probably even said let's add five extra two by fours on there just in case and what do you know we're like 18 two by fours short so Needless to say, don't ever have me do your lumber takeoff. Don't ever have me calculate plumbing parts or electrical or anything because if I'm getting paid by the hour, I'm getting paid, baby, because it takes me multiple trips and multiple attempts, but I'm not here to be graded, okay? I'm just trying to get this job done. We're trying to get all these walls framed up, so tomorrow we're going to get some extra two by fours and hopefully finish doing the interior walls. But for today, we're at least gonna try to get these two walls finished and get a header and you know, our door opening in here. So funny. Uh, Leo is talking more and more. It's not, it's not perfectly enunciated or pronounced, but like he knows what he's saying and he's very adamant and opinionated about what he's saying. And he loves the dogs and he loves calling them, except he can't pronounce their names correctly. So he calls them Leaky and Chuck, which is so funny when I'm outside calling them to come in. And he comes outside with me and starts clapping his hands and says, come Chuck, come Chuck. <laughs> like, I don't think he'll respond to that, but we can try. <laughs> My youngest son, he can't whistle. And when I whistle for the dogs to come in, he'll go to the door and go, Woo! Pretty adorable. <laughs> oh, way too short. <laughs> I knew it. Why? Why'd you do that? Because he told me to cut three eighths off of it. I knew I should know. That's too much. Put it down into the next one. We needed, Mark about, it. We needed about three sixteenths. That's the last one. We're in our bedroom. Is there a giant doorway? <laughs> Can we make a door that big? It's like the great hall to something. Yeah. <laughs> Should we just make it that tall? <laughs> yeah, that would be kind of cool. <laughs> that would be enormous. <laughs> Have doorknobs going all the way to the top. We've just got to frame out the header for this rough opening and then the two walls in there, or three walls by the closet. shower and the closet. And then we'll be done with interior walls, which will be very relieving. Um, it's almost gonna... time for four-way. <clears throat> it's not almost time for four-way. <laughs> It's time for Dean. It's almost time for Dean. Yeah. Once Dean gets here, we'll be able to heat this place. <laughs> and then we'll say, Dean, your heater's not warm enough. <laughs> day. There's maybe six or eight inches of fresh snow. We're supposed to get 30 more inches of snow by the end of the weekend. And we're not building. We're gonna go find ourselves a Christmas tree. Woo! Look at Dada! Yeah! We're ready! The only potentially minor problem is we are in the middle of the storm right now. Maybe it's crazy to be doing this as it's snowing, we're in big trucks. We've got Trent. Okay. <laughs> he loves this kind of thing. It's too, true, he does. For the record, I think this is a bad idea. We're <laughs> excited. I just went sideways. I just went sideways down my driveway trying to back up. Oh, It'll be fun out. either way. If we make it down our mountain, I'll be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> um, Maybe that'll be a good test. Yeah, yeah exactly. Just getting out of here. Yeah. 
welcome in, rubber ducky. Fox <laughs> <laughs> <Long> trot. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> One of the perks of living up in the mountains is that there's so much BLM land um, and you can actually get Christmas tree permits to go cut down your own Christmas tree. Something we never did in my family when I was growing up and I have totally fallen in love with. It's one of my favorite new traditions that we've started <laughs> since moving up here. Last year we went and cut down a tree with Aaron and Cody and a couple other friends. This year we're doing the same, <sighs> but the conditions are, let's just say, less than ideal. Probably the worst day of the year so far to go and do this, but we are gung-ho to go get a Christmas tree, so we're going on an adventure. Picking up friends. Big truck brigade. So I take my love. Honestly, the paved section of our mountain is the most treacherous because it gets so much icier than the dirt. I don't really think anybody on our mountain wants to have the dirt section paved. People ask us that all the time. First of all, it'd be super expensive, like millions of dollars. Um, but also in the winter, having a dirt road that gets compacted with snow is way grip. Oh boy. Minor heart attack there. We're fine. <laughs> First trip down after a big snowstorm is always blizzard we're looking for Christmas trees we've got a big squad together and uh, we're gonna start trekking hey buddy hey, what do you uh, think I don't know what do you guys think looks pretty good sure okay I'm Worth sure this, shot. I'm sure this is fine I wish we had brought snowmobiles I feel like someone mentioned that it's too shallow okay. <laughs> ruin our sleds. I did mention that <laughs> we could have bought, brought my old ones Oh yeah. Fine. What's going on, baby? Hello. How you doing, How you doing, brother? How's it good. going? Good. How are you? Good. Good to Let's see you. Imagine. We'll get the kids ready. Okay. And uh... all right. Chilly out here. Your heart. All right, Leo, are you ready? Mm. We're gonna find a Christmas tree. Mm. Okay, let's go. There's some deep snow over here. We've got a hundred kids and six adults and we are all snow geared up and ready to start looking for some trees. There's a bunch of other people out here looking as well. So hopefully um, there's a couple trees left for us. Leo is having a blast so far, but it's pretty cold. So we'll see how long that lasts. Are you ready? Come on, Leo, let's go. All right, we have been out here for probably about 30, 45 minutes, I'd say. It's absolutely freezing. The wind is actually blowing pretty strong. Trying to find a tree up here is difficult. Allie and Leo had to head back to the truck because Leo was too cold. So now I'm the one that has to pick the tree. 
Well, half the bunch is okay. We all got a tree, right? We got a tree. Hey, we made it then. Sweat, blood, and tears. Yes, we got for it. real. We all made it back to the car in one piece. Well, mostly one piece. There were a couple meltdowns, but with so many children uh, between all of us adults, I think that was bound to happen. And I was talking to Aaron just now, and we were saying, you know, it's better to do this while kids are young and let them have these meltdowns and let them get used to like, this is the tradition. And then as they get older, they're used to it and they enjoy it and they look forward to it. And that's kind of like Trent and I's whole mentality about getting Leo out for camping trips and exposed to nature and playing in the dirt and um, doing that while he's young and learns that like that's normal and that's fun and that's part of life is living outside and playing outside and sometimes you get cold and dirty but then you warm up again and you clean off and it's all part of the adventure. We've got a tree that I haven't even seen because Trent went and cut it down while I was tending to Leo and his meltdown um, but I'm excited to get back home and put this tree up. Are you excited? Yeah. yeah. What is that a hand warmer? Yeah. You know? <sighs> they say start them young. What? Getting abused in the wilderness? <laughs> can only get better from here. That was crazy. I don't know uh, if any of the footage turned out that I tried to do on the GoPro because the GoPro kept dying because it was so cold out there. It says it's only 21 degrees, but with the wind blowing and I forgot my gloves, so my hands were freezing out there. It was pretty intense. I made like a impromptu decision to just go ahead and get a tree. It's like, it's okay. It's pretty Charlie Brown and a lot of you guys are probably gonna make fun of it and that's okay. Allie and Leo had to bail. I couldn't get any other opinions. Most of the trees that I was running into were like these little tiny dug fir trees that are like really sparse, but it's the thought that counts. What's up guys? Um, the big snowstorm has finally arrived. Uh, we got like probably 16, 18 inches, something like that. Still snowing, still calling for three or four more inches, but it's been calling for three inches for the past six inches. So I don't know how much more snow is coming, but we do have some things that are developing. And that is yesterday when there was only like four or five inches of snow, I was like, I'm gonna get out the snow blower on the skid steer and I'm gonna like fire it up and just run up and down the driveway real quick just to like test it, make sure everything works, see if there's any problems. And uh, long story short, there was a problem. So as soon as I started running the skid steer, um, it started overheating and like the temperature started going up really high and then the skid steer has like all these safety features. So when the temperature gets high, it just shuts the motor down for you because it doesn't want you to do any damage. I could not figure out for the life of me what the problem was because I would let it sit for a minute and then I would fire it back up and then it would start working again. And I was like, what is going on here? Like, I just can't figure it out. I started fiddling around with the skid steer and I'm like pretty mechanically inclined. I can figure out what's going on with engines a lot of the time. So I start looking in the back and I start noticing, oh my gosh, like this thing's overheated. It's like sprayed some antifreeze out. You know, the cooling system has gotten really, really hot and I couldn't figure out what it was couldn't figure out what it was. And then after a while I went and checked and I'm like, I'm gonna check if the fan is spinning. I tried to spin the fan and the fan wouldn't spin. And I looked down and the belt that drives the fan was completely shredded and destroyed. So basically a brand new skid steer that's our only snow blower for the driveway is out of commission. So needless to say, our driveway is at least knee deep. And uh, I'm gonna do my first snow blowing of the season with our Honda snowblower here on the deck, and uh, you guys can see in the video how deep it is out here. When your life's been put on hold for far too long, when the sorrow There is always
lot of snow on these stairs. Unfortunately, we made the mistake walking on them last night and not shoveling them. So now the snow is compacted, basically frozen. The good news is anywhere that you haven't walked is kind of just light and fluffy. I just finished doing all the snow removal on the deck and the stairs. And let me just say, one, the snow is pretty damp. It's like pretty wet and heavy and uh, not the light fluffy snow that I'm used to. And two, no one is more excited than me to have the deck and the stairs completely covered with a roof next summer. It's definitely happening because this is not my favorite activity. Leo, do you want to eat another piece of bagel? No, I don't want to get it. You want to watch Monster Zinc? Mm. I tried to get the skid steer out with the snow blower, and I tried to kind of mess around in the snow when this big storm happened. I have no idea why the fan belt failed, how it got shredded, how it got tangled up in there. I don't know what happened, but uh, it's bad. So I ordered a new belt and uh, I actually, the belt showed up uh, yesterday. So the belt is here and I think today, because I can't really get a service guy up here because of the snow and we can't get our skid steer down to a place so that they could do like some warranty service on it. So I'm gonna do it myself. How are you guys? Good morning. While the guys are working outside today, I am actually getting ready to go down into the valley with my mom for a doctor's appointment. We feel very fortunate that the University of Utah has an incredible healthcare system, and so she's been getting some really good care, um, but it's still been very, very hard. So I'm going down today for uh, her monthly clinic visit, basically, and uh, in the meantime, I'm hoping Trent is able to get the skid steer fully fixed while I'm gone. I'm going to the doctor with my parents. You're going to fix our brand new but broken skid steer. I'm gonna work on the skid steer. Brandon and Grayson are running to BMC to get all the lumber that we need to build the stair sets, to do our interior walls up in the bedroom and get all of the framing finished so that we can move on to plumbing. But uh, while they're gone doing that, I'm hopefully gonna get the snow blower going because we have a giant mountain of snow <laughs> basically blocking the entrance into our, uh, our addition, so. Need to get the snowblower back there. All right, so I don't think I've really shown you guys this, but I was able to fit the skid steer in here underneath the Toyota. I just had to remove the rear axle, which I have put in the Toyota. I haven't been able to release any videos on Trent's garage because I've just been overworked and short on time and exhausted and I'm doing my best to just do everything, but I've been falling short on Trent's garage. So if you're a fan of Trent's garage and you're wanting those videos, let me know in the comments because I really need some extra motivation to, to get back at it. But I was able to barely, barely, barely squeeze the skid steer in here. Um, you can see the snow blower up there is probably about an inch away from the door. Uh, the lift arm right there is basically touching the cab. And then the lift arm on this side is also basically touching the cab. It literally fits with like a quarter inch to spare. So 
it's in here, it's warm, it's out of the snow, works for me. But uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and dive into trying to get this belt replaced and this is going to be tough because this engine is not one that I've ever worked on and it's very difficult to get in here without taking a bunch of stuff apart, which I don't wanna take a bunch of stuff apart, I wanna just kinda quickly get the belt off and on. So hopefully I can do that. All right, so it's probably a little bit dark in here. I don't know how well you guys can actually see or how much you guys actually even care about this, but I'm gonna show you anyway. So this right here is the AC compressor. That's what runs the air conditioning. Not vital, great to have in the summertime, but not super important. This pulley runs off of this pulley and that belt runs the air conditioning. Now this really wide part of this pulley right here actually runs the water pump and runs the fan and is connected to the crank at the very bottom and also runs off the alternator way over there way down here on the far left. Now the belt that I have has to go around this, around the crank at the very bottom, around a tensioner pulley, and then on the alternator. And then I've got to tighten everything and make sure it works. So without further ado, here we go. Also, um, if you get squeamish with blood or anything like that, I'll give you a, a warning right now. Maybe skip through this next part or don't watch, but uh, I smashed my finger and uh, it was inside my glove. So it's not actually that bad. It just bled inside the glove. I've got great news. And that's that I got the serpentine belt on, which is the one that broke. I got the air conditioning pulley back on and the belt back on, which I need in the summertime for air conditioning. And I don't really have much casualties or many casualties to report other than that thing that happened to the tip of my finger that bled a lot. Um, I'm ready to basically close up this door, close the hood, put all my tools away, fire this thing up, snow blow and have no problems and no issues and just have lots of fun from here on out. Like I mentioned earlier, we had all of the snow slide off of this back roof, which was really relieving. We were curious if that was actually gonna happen or not, and it did, and it all piled up right here. That is one storm, and it's like halfway up the window, which means if we had multiple storms, one after the other, this could get basically just completely piled up and blocked in. So it's very imperative that I can get the skid steer back here, snow blow this giant pile away from the house, we're gonna test that theory right now. I think I can do it, but uh, we'll see how this goes. Compared to what was just here, this is amazing. I was able to basically plow this entire section, get up here, knock down those giant mounds. This over here is huge because all the snow off the main roof builds up right here. It all sloughs down right there. And then I've got to be able to hit that with the snow blower. There is uh, still an issue. And that is that I can't really get super close to the building because the snow blower will damage the door or the window. So I can get about this close, and then we'll have to take a shovel to kind of like knock the stuff away from the building and kind of flatten it down. The good news is the uh, snow blower that's on the skid steer is extremely powerful. So it's not like I'll ever have these mounds of snow that get compacted that I won't be able to just push and munch right through. <sighs> I'm happy with the snow blower. I think it's gonna do a good job this winter. Even if we do have a crazy winter, I think we can handle it. And if we have a light winter, it'll be that much easier to clear the snow. All right, guys, I think I just need to start off by saying I am so happy that I was able to fix the skid steer. 
I came home after a very long day at the doctor and I'm very relieved as well because as you could see, that snow was building up and nobody could get into the addition. Yeah, and <laughs> uh, one more snowstorm and like the doors could have been covered. Yeah. And then I'm gonna like hit yeah. the doors with the snow blower or know, something if we crazy, ever go on so. vacation in the winter, don't even think about okay. it. Okay. <laughs> cannot go on vacation. Okay. But anyway, I'm just glad that the skid steer is fixed. The yeah. snow blower is going and we are ready for more winter to come by. Was a little disappointing that our brand new skid steer broke out of the blue. But... Mostly just confusing because nobody knows what happened. Like, yeah. why did it break? I smelled some burning rubber like when we first had the skid steer, like the first week that I had it. Mm. And we tried to figure out what it was and couldn't figure it out and couldn't figure it out. And I'm guessing the belt was too tight or too loose or okay. something, but either way, it's fixed now. we've got it fixed now <laughs> and we are on to the next. Yeah. So this is where we're gonna let you guys go. If you guys enjoyed coming along on today's adventure, make sure you show us by giving us a big thumbs up on today's video. Consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already. Thanks again to Sundays for Dogs for sponsoring today's video. Click the link in our description to check them out. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Adios.